Okay, I think we are started. Welcome to tonight's program. This is Fire Alpaca, which is um, a drawing software that I hadn't heard of until maybe a year ago. And um, I wanted to offer it up as an option to people in the absence of the library's digital media lab. If you don't know what that is, on the second floor, a uh, computer lab was converted to be a sort of creative space with um, 10 Adobe creative licenses um, for things like Photoshop, Illustrator, and some fancy scanners and drawing tablets and other things like that. So while the library was closed, the digital media lab was not open. And so this was to help fill its place but if you haven't heard this news, just yesterday we went into a new reopening phase. And so now I have a little mini DML set up on the east end of the library on the second floor. And there is a computer with Adobe and one of the nice scanners so that you could use that for up to 60 minutes for a visit if you need to. That said, <laughs> um, this Fire Alp Alpaca program is kind of similar to what you'd see in Photoshop and Illustrator, but the advantage of being able to use it at home, and I think it also has some things that might just be a little more intuitive than Photoshop. So we'll just see what you think of it and see if it's useful to you or not. Let me get set up here. Um, so the official description of it, Fire Alpaca is a free drawing tool available in 10 languages and it's a Japanese company that offers it. <clears throat> it works on Mac OS and Windows, but there is no mobile version. So I don't know if any of you joined me for the um, Autodesk sketchbook demonstration a month or two ago. So that one I'm used to using on my little phone and drawing with my finger. This one doesn't have a phone option and it's really more for a desktop computer. But they are, there are similarities between those two. And I would say this one felt more to me like Photoshop than Sketchbook did. Um, okay, has anybody, before we get started, has anybody tried Fire Alpaca before and wants to be there to <laughs> support me or offer their own tips as we go along? Okay, Does everybody, has anybody here used um, other digital drawing software other than Terry, obviously? Um, so like Photoshop or Illustrator, even Microsoft Paint, even <laughs> anything like that where you, you drew Corel. with a, a mouse? Corel. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah. If, if this is brand new to you, um, it might, I might go a little bit fast if, if every concept is new, but if you have any familiarity with online drawing, um, you can take the bits that are interesting to you to get started. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen here. And I, I made this picture earlier today and I'm just gonna sort of use it as an illustration of, of what I'm gonna do. This is not fine art, by the way. <clears throat> so what I did was I I did this little drawing of this little monster guy onto a transparent background using lots of different kinds of brush tools and techniques that we'll go over. And then I saved it with the transparent background as a PNG. Then I opened up in a different Fire Alpaca document this picture from the library. And I made the floor this magical gradient color. And then I brought in my little monster. And then in a new layer, I gave him a little shadow to kind of ground him a little bit on the magical library floor. So <clears throat> I'm not saying that this is the most amazing picture you've ever seen, but at least no. it's a starting point to show you what Fire Alpaca is capable of. Um, let me stop sharing that. So the Fire Alpaca software is free, like I said, um, and you can just go to their website and download it. When I loaded it onto my Mac computer, there were a couple of moments where there was a pop-up ad, but the ads are clearly labeled and you can just click the X to get rid of them. This is free software, so you can kind of expect to jump through a couple of hoops like that to get it. When I open it up, let me share my screen for that. Okay, hopefully you can see this. 
So there is a little pop-up ad again. Um, here's a few things that I'm looking at. So they're telling me I can get a different version. I think I have the latest version, so I'm ignoring that. They've got this little did you know tip that changes each time that I open up the program. It's actually pretty helpful. This I'm not worried about my window disappearing, but other prompts have been like, how do I use the watercolor brush? Or how do I add a brush? Um, <clears throat> so you might find that helpful. Then um, for a long time, they have been showing this ad for this campaign they're doing <laughs> where you can draw something on their program and then share it with this tag and they're giving away prizes. I don't know anything about the legitimacy <laughs> of that program. I've just been ignoring it. But just so you know, this is gonna pop up each time you open it, you can just close it out. So let me show you what I'm looking at as I look at this overall screen here. Um, let me get my windows sorted out so that I can see my notes too. Okay, so across the top, there's a bar with some, some settings. And there's a bar down the left with lots of tools. And then I also have a little bar at the bottom with some text. So each time I choose one of these tools at the left, the settings across the top change. So you'll want to sort of keep your eye there. <clears throat> if you're not sure what the tool is, the bottom bar is giving me the name of the tool as I hover over it. So that's very handy. Um, you'll see that there's this gray space in the middle. That means that I don't have any document set up yet. And so we can add one by going to File and New. So to create a new image, I've got these three tabs. I can choose a standard canvas and it'll give me, it defaulted to this size when I started, um, but to me, a thousand by a thousand is just big enough. <clears throat> you can do some other settings here that I don't, I didn't mess with, but you're welcome to try. If you know you're gonna print it, you can start with a paper size. If you're worried about having high resolution, you can increase that. <clears throat> the transparent background is something that if you've used Photoshop before, you'll know that that is a handy option. Um, and even if you're not planning to use the transparent background in the way that you save it and use an image later, it doesn't hurt to just start with that. And then a couple more options that you wouldn't have to mess with unless you were doing something advanced. So this is all I need to get started just to do some drawing. I'm gonna come back later and show you the comic and animation tabs. Don't let me forget that. So here I am, I've got my square that's ready for me to draw on it. Um, whoops. And I just did. <laughs> so if you're not familiar with Photoshop, this um, gray checkerboard might look strange to you. That's the sign that this is transparent. So if I, just like I did with my little monster, I drew my monster on top of this checkerboard. And when I saved him, the checkerboard is just was nothing. Um, let's see here. So a few things to show you before I kind of get drawing is that there's a zoom over on the right. I can zoom in, zoom back out. I can also um, rotate it if that's somehow helpful to me as I'm drawing. And if it's hard to get it back exactly to zero, this little button resets me. You can also reverse image your, um, your canvas. I'm not sure why you would wanna do that, but that's an option. And then the next box down is my layers. So if layers are new to you, I'll just do a quick intro. <clears throat> this is like if you were painting on top of um, sheets of glass or clear plastic. So you can draw something on one layer, put another clear layer on top, and you'll be able to see that bottom layer unless you draw something on top of your drawing. And you can sort of do that infinitely and build it all up. 
But the beautiful thing is that you can then reorder your layers. So if you need something to show on top, you can bring it up from the bottom. You can delete a layer if, if it wasn't any good. You can make modifications like that. And let me just do some scribbling and show you some quick layer stuff. So this went on to my first layer. And this little button will give me a new layer. Let me do another color. Okay, so I can choose to not be able to see this green layer if it's distracting for me, or I can bring it back up. I can change the order and put the purple on top or bring the green back on top. I can change the opacity so I can make the green see-through for that whole layer, bring it back all the way up. And then you can also play with all these features for like what function the layer has. So I can make it, it makes the purple part lighter wherever I drew something on that upper layer. Or I can make it darker, things like that. Change the color, make it much darker, things like that. So those are fun things to goof around with if that sounds interesting to you. Another thing in these layers that I hadn't encountered before is this clipping. This is very interesting to me. <laughs> so um, it's sort of thinking about the existing layers. And since this layer two is highlighted, it's blue right now. If I choose clipping, it's going to think, oh, you just meant to draw in what was in layer one. So it's trying to help me out. So a better example of this is if in layer one, let's say I did a really big circle. Sorry that this looks terrible. And then I was trying in layer two to do shading. Let me just do a whole new layer to do, or maybe some highlights. But I kind of went over the edges a little bit if I, in this layer three, choose clipping, nope, <laughs> sorry, let me get rid of layer two. If I do clipping here, there you see how it brought it in. So it's just conforming to what was in layer one. And if I undo it, it's what I actually drew again. Okay, that's some layering talk. <clears throat> let me, delete some of these layers. So this layer three is highlighted. I'm gonna click on the garbage can. This one, click on the garbage can. This one, I can, um, I can erase it. Let me show you some different ways to erase. So I can just use this eraser tool, make it really big and do some manual erasing. There's also a lot of other ways you could erase, but, um, That'll be one way to start. The majority of the time you're gonna be spending in this brush tool. And you can see down at the bottom that that's what it's called. And um, with it comes these windows where I can see my color, what that particular brush is going to do. And these are my choices at the bottom. You see there are a fair number. I would say not as many as Autodesk Sketchbook had, um, but you can also add more um, by going out to their website. I think it's probably free, but I haven't explored that much yet. And then it gives me settings for that particular brush. So the pen brush right now, this is the size control. And you see it's giving me a little preview of how big it is. I can also change the size down here at the right. It gives me that preview too as I hover over it. And then the next bar down, this is my opacity. So let me draw a little squiggle. I'm gonna bring this way down, draw another squiggle, right? And then I haven't played with this setting yet. If I go to this pen option that has fade in and fade out, you'll see in my preview that it gets skinnier on the ends. And so let's watch what happens. Boop. Do you see how it changed when I let go? 
I'm holding on, letting go, it feathers out the ends as though I was doing calligraphy maybe. And of course you can change the size and things like that for that one as well. Pencil, I'll show you what pencil does. Pretty predictable. This canvas version is kind of scratchy. If I bring up the size, see how it, it looks sort of like spray paint on the edges. You can kind of tell that that's gonna happen by looking at this part of the preview too. And you can tell pretty obviously there as well. Sketchbook does something similar where it gives it an unpredictable edge, things like that. The eraser um, that you use down here can act like a brush. So you might like that you can do very precise little brush erasing, but I wanna also show you up here using the eraser tool on the left that you get new choices. And so this, you can see it's kind of a standard eraser with a hard edge. That's just a different size of that same eraser. This one has soft edges. So if I were to try to erase this, it sort of fuzzes it around the edge, different size of the soft eraser. And then this is interesting, this canvas, <clears throat> excuse me. So it gives an interesting kind of grungy effect and the sketchbook does a different kind of grunge. So you could use that to some interesting effect. And I did that on my monster too. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna get rid of this layer and let's start a little monster drawing using some of these brushes. Um, and we'll make this monster green. So I'm just gonna start with the big pen brush. Make my, oops and bring my opacity up. I'm just gonna sort of draw my monster shape. Um, if I wanna fill this in, I have a couple of options. I, um, I can use this uh, paint bucket tool, but one thing that I learned is that it defaults to this setting, expanding no pixels. And as I fill it in, you might be able to see that it leaves this imperfect line around it. So the trick I found online is to always bring this up one or two pixels and then it fills it in perfectly. I don't know why, but that would frustrate you if you <laughs> did that on your own and didn't know why. So there is a tip. And so here's my monster. If I wanted to, um, give him eyes, I can use this square here. And I always have to remind myself and I'm gonna add a new layer. So anytime I'm gonna make a change that I might want to undo or think of separately than what I did before, I'm gonna do it in a new layer so that I can easily undo it if I need to. So to make shapes, um, you have some choices. You can make a shape using the brush tool. And you'll see up at the top, I'll talk about the snap thing in a minute, but there's also this option to make a shape. And so I can choose to make an ellipse, which will be a circle for me. And if I pick a different color and bring down my size a little bit here, if I draw a circle, it does an outline. So I might like that. Um, or if I wanted it to have been filled in, I can start with this little black square at the left. I'm gonna pick a different color so that it's pretty obvious. Um, and I can draw another, whoops, that's a square. I can choose the ellipse from the top. And I need it to be a brighter blue, I think. So I can draw my little circle here and it fills it right in. So two different shape options, but they both come from this option at the top where you're controlling what the shape is. And I kind of like how that looks. It's a little creepy little monster. I'm gonna give him some pupils. <laughs> and 
And if I didn't like how that, um, how that landed, I can use this move tool. I should be able to scoot around. Oh, not that part because it was on the same layer. But I can use the magic wand tool. I should be able to grab that pupil, switch over here to the move tool, and then I can scoot it around into the center where I want it. And I can do control D, or if I go to view and, no, sorry, select and deselect, that gets rid of my highlighting. I'm gonna do one more thing for his eyes. I'm gonna go back to the regular pen tool and give him a little, um, little reflection of white on his eyes. Okay, so there's my little monster's eyes. I'm gonna add a new layer and I'm gonna decorate his body a little bit with and show you all these different brushes, but I'm gonna move the eyes to the top because I want them to always be visible. <clears throat> so working down here, the pen with the fade in and fade out, let's give him some some, oops, I was still in my shape selection up here. <laughs> this has tripped me up more than once. Um, so I'm going to uncheck the shape. And if I do some little squiggles, we'll be the hair or whatever this looks like. Um, let me show you what the snap means while I'm looking at it. So I'm going to go back to the regular pen. This gives you guidelines and it's really kind of fun. So um, right now it's off, but I can click this parallel lines. And can you see these faint diagonal lines that showed up? If I click on this black dot at the right of the snap area, it will let me reset where they fall. And when I go to draw on top of it, let me switch to a different color here. This yellow. If I go to draw, even though I'm kind of trying to draw a squiggly line right now, it's conforming to those arrow, those guidelines. I can't draw a bad line, even if I want to. Another one here is a grid. So it'll sort of conform your lines one way or the other, no matter where you move your mouse. I'll do those. This has just sort of some directional lines. And so I can, oops, I can set how it goes. And then when I go to draw, it's adhering to those lines, et cetera. I won't make you watch all of these, but I did watch some other people do tutorials. <clears throat> and for a lot of people, if they just wanted to draw a circle, they used this little circle option. Again, you can grab a hold of where it lands and draw a little something around, around the eyes. It's pretty satisfying. I am doing this all in the wrong layer. Oh no. <laughs> so let's undo those little circles and I'm gonna switch to my middle layer. This is, um, this is always a problem for me and other people. So let that be a lesson. <laughs> so what I'm talking about is that my eye layer, I don't know how well you can see this. My eye layer now has the green squiggles and the yellow lines that I meant to do as like a separate body decoration layer. So now I'm gonna do the rest in this middle layer called layer four. Okay. I've been talking a lot. Should I pause and see if there are any questions? Is anybody wondering about what they've seen so far? Do the layers make sense if you haven't encountered those before? I just keep saying cool. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> okay, well, feel free to interrupt me if, um, if anything happens that you wanna talk about more, okay? I'm gonna keep working through these. So, um, I showed you the eraser already. Airbrush, you might be drawn to if you've used um, Microsoft Paint before. Now see how this is showing up behind those yellow lines? That's because this layer is below 
layer that I drew those yellow lines in, which, you know, I didn't mean to do, but it looks good. And this one's bigger. The watercolor, let me show you what that does. It's pretty similar to the, um, the airbrush. If I make it humongous and do it over here, um, let me do the, the next option, the bleeding one. That has more interesting edges, I think. So you can play around with the way you like that effect to go. And again, I can use my big eraser tool up here to get rid of that part that I drew. So see, there's a little yellow dot up here, get rid of that. Okay, so back to my brush option at the left, scrolling through my other brushes. Blurring and smudging are great. So before I blur and smudge, let me get some nice polka dots on this guy. And I'll show you what happens. Okay, so I'm in the same layer where I drew the orange polka dots. If I come down to blur and I I'm on this one. It, oh, it's hard to see. Let me zoom in. I'm going to do this one. So you see right now it's got sort of a crisp edge. If I blur, it softens that edge. And the more times I click, the softer and softer it gets. Whereas for this one, I'm going to switch to smudge. Scoot over a little bit. And this will let me drag it like I'm dragging with my finger and I can change the shape or kind of distort it pretty considerably. And so I can smudge all of these if I want to. I can smudge the edges of the watercolor, right? Do whatever I want to, it's kind of powerful. And if I come up into my layer with those yellow lines, I can smudge those yellow lines around look interesting. Zooming back out. This monster looks much cooler than my first one, so <laughs> I'm happy about that. Um, mixing will mix my paint colors. Let me zoom in again. And right, so that's kind of a big impact. I don't necessarily like the way that looks, but if you were trying to do something very painterly, I think that that would be a fun tool to use. You could lay down some basic shapes and then, um, and then blend and move them around together. And of course, I've got the brush pretty big right now, but you could do some pretty fine, careful things with that and change the, you know, blend and color things together. Let's see, the edge pen, I'm gonna use this to make uh, my little monster's hands, like I did on the earlier one. This is gonna be um, white on the inside and then whatever color I've picked on the outside. So for right now, since orange is my color up here, <clears throat> and I didn't really talk about how I'm changing colors, but hopefully this is intuitive to people. So you can drag your dot around to get sort of the pure color up here or the color plus white. And if you drag it down, it's the color plus black or going in this direction, it's gray added to the orange. And then of course you can choose different base colors by dragging up and down the spectrum over here. So if I want his arms to have red outlines, I'm gonna bring it up to the red, leave it in this brightest corner. But if I wanted a subtle or darker red, I could move it over here. And then this is my size. I'm gonna bring it up a little bit and I'm gonna give him hands like I did earlier. The, um, the edge brush is kind of interesting. So I've made that all one click. Now I'm letting go. If I tried to draw his hand like this and draw fingers, it's giving me an edge around all of them, which is not an effect that I want. So I'm undoing those. But as long as you keep your click down, it treats it like one big brush stroke. Okay. 
So there he is. And I can also um, give him some feet now if I want to. And I'm gonna show you about filling in, oops. I'm gonna show you about using the bucket tool to fill things in um, for his feet. So um, if I don't like it that that's transparent inside, I can use that bucket and choose color that I want and fill that in. But now if I think, you know, that also looks kind of weird, I can just do it again onto the white part. And you can probably see that, oops, that it still gave me that little line, right? So I'm gonna undo that and I'm gonna expand it by more pixels so that it fills in seamlessly. I haven't quite understood why it acts the way it does sometimes, but at least it's easy enough to fix. Next to the bucket tool is the gradient tool. And so you might think, oh, <laughs> I love gradients. I will choose two colors up here by clicking and I will um, fill in his feet as a gradient between this purple and the orange. And as you bring it over here, you have to sort of draw a line indicating the direction of the gradient. That will not work. Whoa, right? And so let's find out why. Um, first of all, it's not really designed to, to fill in little shapes like the bucket tool has. It's really meant to fill the foreground and the background of your whole canvas. Or if I do just the foreground, it fills it in orange to transparent. If I undo that, if I do transparent to foreground, it does the opposite. So you might enjoy popping that on as an effect, either in your base layer as a background um, or for something specific. But if you wanted it to just be on a little part, um, you can use this little lasso tool or the magic wand tool would be faster to select a little part, then come to this gradient tool. I think this will work. Yeah. So back to my magic wand. How do I do this? I need to deselect. Oh, it's thinking. Deselect, there we go. I'm gonna magic wand the other foot or I'll show you with the lasso. This is not gonna be very precise because I'm drawing on my little laptop trackpad, but you can do something similar and then um, fill that in with the gradient, a little imperfectly, but that's okay. Actually, that's gonna bother me now, so I'm gonna do it the other way. Any questions about the selection tools? This one is the same kind you're probably familiar with where it would just select a rectangle's worth of material. What can you do with it at that point? You can hit the delete button on your computer. It's only gonna delete that layer's worth of stuff, but you might wanna do that. You also could go up to select and transform that's gonna let me grab it and move it around or even change the size or um, flip it side to side, things like that. If you do use the transform thing, you have to click okay to save your changes. Otherwise you will regret it. It won't <laughs> hold on to it, but I'm gonna undo that. So it looks the same. I will magic wand his other foot. Okay. Any questions about that so far? I'm gonna make a new layer and show you some kind of wild brushes and then I'm gonna probably just delete them. But there's some interesting brushes in here. So this one gives you multiple lines and let me just show you, whoops. That happened because I was still in the gradient thing, not in the brush. 
common mistake. So there's some squiggly lines. This one has little images of leaves. So let me get this so it'll be visible. Right, what a fast way to fill in some space if you needed to or do something decorative. And depending on what size you do, it's gonna look radically different. It's a second type of leaf that you can use. That's not enough of a difference, hang on. A little more natural looking leaf. You can add flowers. You can see what they look like here. Particles are sort of dots. And actually those would look good on him. So I'm gonna come back to layer four and I'm gonna give him some chicken pox, kind of. Then more options, stars. It's pretty predictable. He would look good with some stars too. So let's give him some stars here. And different um, thickness and outlines of stars. The stalk is like uh, the stalk of a plant. So anywhere I draw this, I'm on the wrong layer, hang on. Anywhere I draw this, it's gonna follow my mouse. More than one option there, things like that. Um, show you a couple more, that's fun. This does sort of a Roman key, so that's the right word. Fluffy. Minor thing. Okay, let me delete this layer. I'm gonna do one more to show you the symmetry, which is kind of great. So I'm gonna do this just on top. I can I can also hide my other layers while I show you this. Okay, the first symmetry one, here's what it looks like. As I draw, it's making it symmetrical. If I choose the next option, which is a different color, it's more of like a flower. It's giving me five angles. And then this one, it's giving me six, right? One, two, three, no, that's five. So the rotation is just different. So this is fun to play around with. You might enjoy just sort of um, the meditative mandala creation <laughs> angle for that one. And then we're pretty near the end of these, just some more decorative options. This one's kind of nice, this, um, make it darker. It's just a bunch of grids, things like that. So you can play and have lots of fun with these. Let me make my layers visible again. Here he is. Um, as I said before, I can change the opacity so I could make those decorations more subtle or bring them back up, things like that. Let me check what I might have missed. Did I miss anything here? Oh yeah, so um, at the side of each of these brushes, there's a little gear for settings. That'll pop up a window and um, these are the settings you always see here. But if you have a drawing tablet with um, a pen that you can use pressure sensitivity with, you can um, control how that works here. And then some of them have other options or textures that you can control. Some people make their own custom brush and then they can save it here. You might like that. You can duplicate it and then make your changes so that you don't lose the original. Um, and then you can also add brushes, like I said, from their website, if you really get deep into this. But I would say for most uses, um, the pen brush and the pen that fades in and out is good for general drawing. And then, um, you know, the airbrush, watercolor, those other options are nice to supplement it. Okay, and I talked about the special edges on the erasers and that, and the fill bucket. Let's see. Oh, I did not talk about um, this dot tool. 
This basically draws pixel by pixel. So if I zoom way in, um, give me one second here. I just remembered that I should write down how many people came. Okay, <laughs> if I zoom way in and I get my little dot pencil going here, um, I need to zoom in a lot more. You can see that it's drawing pixel by pixel, very, very tiny. Why would you want this? Maybe if you had a photo that you wanted to make changes to and you were willing to do it at the pixel level that you just needed to um, erase something or correct something, um, you might like that. Or if you're doing kind of a small image, this is just kind of a fun effect. I don't know how visible it'll be on his face there, but yeah, you can kind of see that. It's, it's an interesting effect. And then working down here, I showed you that this helps you move things. I'm in this layer. So if I go to move things, it's gonna move that whole layer. But if I, um, if I selected something in particular, the move option would just move what I had selected. This fills in a shape as you draw it. This helps you fill in anything you like. And that's the gradient. These are my selection tools. I'm gonna to kind of ignore these because um, they're a little more advanced, but you can play around with those. And then text is kind of obvious and these others will come up when I show you the um, comic book template. And the, with the size of my screen, there's two more options. There's the eyedropper tool and the hand. I can't get the eyedropper to show up that way, but basically if I'm in the brush tool, I can also go up to tool at the top, choose the eyedropper or use the keyboard shortcut of the letter I, and I can grab any color. If you watch over here, it's letting me pick up a color so that I can replicate it if I want to. And I can start painting again with that same, oops, <laughs> with the same blue. I can add it in wherever I want to. Okay. One more thing, let me show you. No, I'll, I'll show you that when I move it to my other picture. So I'm gonna call my monster done. And I can sort of do a visual check here that I didn't have anything that kind of strayed out into the transparent area. Sometimes you might have accidentally drawn something out there. That'll come along as like little separate dots. And I'll just show you that when we do it. But for now, I'm going to file and export. If I went to save it, it's more like saving the document so I can change it again later. But since I'm just gonna use this monster as a little tool to get into a new document, I'm gonna save it as a transparent PNG. And I'm not gonna make these changes, but you're welcome to explore that. And I'm gonna save him as 111 monster. Now, if I close out of him, Oh, sure, I'll save. So now I'll show you that if I save this document, this is 111 monster document, I get the choice of my file format. So this MDP is Fire Alpaca's own file format. It basically means that I'll be able to reopen it and see all my layers and work backwards and, and make my changes if I need to or I can just save it as a plain image that I wanna share online or something. Or I can also share it, save it as a Photoshop document if I knew I wanted to open it up that way. So you've got some nice options there. And that is saved and out of the way. So now I'm gonna start the process where I'm gonna put it into the library. So I'm gonna open, instead of going new with a blank document, I'm just gonna open up my picture of the library from my desktop. Okay, here it is. If this, <laughs> if this um, looks familiar to you, it's because you've been in the library. If it's been a whole year since you've been there, um, we'll be glad for you to be able to come back and, and stand in the library stacks yourself. But so you'll see that this added it as layer one. 
if I want to bring in my little monster, I can go to file and open as a new layer and find my little 111 monster. And it dropped him over on the left here. So I'm going to use my little move tool and drag him into the middle. His, his size is pretty good naturally, but I could go up to, um, let me think about where this is, select and then transform. This is where I could make him bigger or smaller. I can flip him side to side and change things like that. Or um, if I choose the, um, the mesh transform option, I can, let me zoom in a little bit here before I do this. I can distort him kind of a lot. I can bring things around and make it very interesting. Bring that way out, things like that. I would have to say, okay, if I want to save that. And it lets me choose how many points I have to drag around. So if you needed more or fewer, you can control that as well. I'm going to cancel because I liked the way he looks as he is. And I'm going to zoom back out. So if I wanted to make some changes to this photo, I can hide the monster layer and choose my photo layer. And let me just show you that there's some basic photo editing um, tools built in here. So if I go to um, filter, you'll see some familiar photo editing terms. So I can change my levels of brightness and darkness, things like that, and the way it outputs and save that. I can also change the color levels. I didn't expect that to be quite so great. Let's let's leave it as purple shelves. Why not? Saturation level, um, things like that. Okay, that's pretty fun. And you can play around with blurs like you might have seen in other ones. The some of these options I didn't quite understand the point of. So I'm going to do cloud. It kind of when I did this earlier, it sort of obliterates my whole picture. So I'm going to undo that. I'm not sure how that would be used, but you could certainly play around with some of these options um, to do some interesting color stuff. I want to show you one more, and that's the chromatic aberration. This is sort of like gives a 3D glasses effect or like a misprint in a paper. If I hadn't made this purple, it might be a little more obvious <laughs> what this looks like. But this moves some of the colors up or down. And this moves them side to side. So it just sort of makes it a little, a little weird looking. But it's already weird enough with the purple shells. Um, when I did my example, I put a little gradient on the floor. I'll just show you quickly how I did that. I used um, the lasso tool and I just kind of sloppily drew a little shape to cover the floor. I'm extra sloppy right now. Once that's highlighted, I can choose my gradient tool again and think about my two colors. So if I want this one to be green, this one to be yellow. I'm ready to draw my line. Oh, and that looks bad, right? Because this is transparent. So let me switch it so that it's going to be my two colors. There we go. <laughs> if I, I drew it in that direction, it went yellow to green. If I undo it and draw the other way, it reverses my colors. So I'm happy with that. But if I don't like those edges, this is just like the other one, even though I've got a picture here, I can bring this in and see how awful that looks. I can switch to my paintbrush and find my smudge. It's kind of big and I can 
soften these edges so that they look a little bit nicer. I could also, you know, I could fill this in differently if that really bothered me there, but I can just make all the changes that I want to. I could also, before we go any farther, I can make a new layer It's in between these. And we didn't do the polka dot brush before. Polka dot brush, let's give this some polka dots. Why not? Okay, and let me bring my monster back on top. So one other thing that I did was give him a little shadow before. So I'm gonna make one more layer. This put it below the monster, that's fine. That's, that's where I want it. But if it went above, we can also make that change. And I'm just gonna use the regular pen and just sort of use my judgment about what color is gonna look like a shadow under him. And we can change that later, I'll show you how. So if this sort of roughly looks like a shadow, bringing him up on top, if I didn't like the opacity, I can, oops, wrong layer. For my shadow layer, I can bring the opacity down and it sort of softens it into the, the ground color. But I can also, with this layer selected, I can do the same filter and hue change. So I can change it to different colors just by doing this. So I don't mind how it started. That looked kind of realistic. So I'll leave it there. And I think I just realized what time it is. So I think that's enough for my monster and I can export him so that I can share that with people who want to see how cool that library monster is. The other options that I'm going to go over next will be really quickly the comic book and the animation options that are given to us when we're making a new document. But before I do that, does anybody have questions about any part of the, the drawing angle? Okay, then let me close this window and yeah, I'll save it. I'm saving it as a JPEG. Why is that? So if I save as IRL packet. Uh, that just a second. Okay. All right, so as I go to file new, there's also this comic animation options. I'm not going to go into a lot of details because I don't make comics. Um, I don't know if anybody here does, but basically they give us four choices. Dojinshi, Japanese word, professional, and, and then these yonkoma. So the coma means four. And so I'm going to show you the plain one first. So it splits it into these two columns of four. And I happen to have some manga with me. Let me stop sharing for a second. <laughs> so I have some manga checked out from the library. And here's an example of the four. So there's a little title at the top and I'll show you that that's the other option. And then you read down these four and that's like one joke. And then you come to the next one, you read down, that's one sort of panel. So sort of like you would have for um, like any comic from the newspaper, it's just a little section and then it's done. Uh, let me come back to sharing my screen. So if you look at any like web comics or things like that online, you might see this format sometime. And so basically they provide you with these rectangles in advance, as well as this like space that you would want for the margin. And then this last little bit is like for bleeding. Like if you were having this professionally printed, you, it gives you that little safe space. Um, so that's the plain, the plain Yonkoma, which I 
I'm very likely pronouncing wrong. If you go to the ones with a title, you'll see the difference is that there's space to type that little title at the top. And then let me just show you, there isn't much of a difference between the doujinshi and the professional. It's just in the size that it starts with. So I won't spend any time on that, but basically it gives you this rectangle with your margin space and your bleeding line. And I had to look up instructions for how to get, um, to get panels on here. So bear with me while I follow my instructions. So you go to layer and add panel material. It's gonna put an inner frame around this inside line. You can choose how big and what color it is. If I zoom in now, you'll see that there's a little black line where, where the center is. And then this little slicing divide tool is what lets me create the panel. So if you go all the way across, it splits it up. And you can come down from the top and it splits it up. The size of the space is determined up here. So you can control that. You can also do a diagonal line and it breaks it up. So if that's interesting to you, you might wanna explore the comic book part. I will say that um, it doesn't seem to do anything to stop you from painting over those edges. It doesn't erase that for you. So maybe there's some special way that you can change things so that you're always drawing within your panel, but I did not find that. <laughs> so use that as you will. And then really quick, I know it's almost time, um, animation. So animation might be misleading. This is basically a good way to make an animated GIF, which is like that really short little cutesy animated image that you'd see online where it the cycle lasts just maybe a few seconds tops. And so you can choose your size, things here, how many frames you want. So this would be sort of how long it lasts or how many different in between images comprise the whole thing. We'll leave it at eight for right now. And I'm just gonna show you really quick what it does here. So it's giving me eight frames and a layer for each one. So I can start on the first one uh, and this is not gonna be interesting. I'm just gonna draw a squiggle, go to the next layer. It gives me a little reminder of what I drew in that first layer so that if I wanted to make it look like it's moving or if I was going to have it be like a, a person changing their facial expression or something, I can tell where I should draw it from. I'm gonna switch colors for this one. So you'll see that in my example, squiggles. And <laughs> plugging away here. Squiggles. Um, and I'm going to add some text, which we haven't done yet. Make it kind of big. Move that up where you can see it. Oops. Okay, last one. So this is ridiculous. If you were gonna do something, it would be much more interesting than that. But let me just show you that I'll come up to, to view and autoplay, and it's gonna show me <laughs> what I made. So if you were drawing something interesting, you could duplicate those layers and slightly change them. You wouldn't have to redraw it each time, or you could draw radically different things for each layer and combine them together. And then you can control how fast this goes, very fast, very slow. You can change the quality, which this is not very obvious, but if you had something fancy, you might, that might make a difference for you. Has anybody here made an animated GIF before? Just out of curiosity. So what would happen next is if you want to save this, it's basically going to save eight photos or eight images. 
And then there is an associated website that Fire Alpaca runs. It's called Fire Alpaca something that starts with a D. And it, you, it will let you upload your eight images and it'll turn it into the GIF for you. So there's a little extra step, but um, you could have a lot of fun making amazing digital paintings or artwork and then use little changes in those layers to create something fun to share online with your friends. Okay, so that was kind of fast <laughs> for the animation and the comic book part. What questions do you have? It's a very powerful little uh, package, yeah. Yeah, and it's free, yeah, it's so great. it's kind of amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's great, thank you. Yeah, I wanna share that there's some good resources out there. Um, there are tutorials on YouTube that I found that were fantastic. And then um, on the Fire Alpaca website, they have some topics. Let me see if I can share that with you quick. So this is YouTube. Um, this Leslie Lou Marie, um, I watched a bunch of hers and they're really good. On the Fire Alpaca website, they've got this alpaca school. And so if you want to learn how to do this special watercolor technique, how to use the snap tool like I showed you where it draws the lines according to that. Whatever you wanna do, they've got a lot of interesting stuff here. And then also just randomly, I did a Google search and like there's all these little tutorials that people have made and put on Pinterest or just shared online. And so if you're like, oh, I wanna like learn from this, you know, probably a teenager about how they, how they do their digital art, um, that could be a fantastic way to learn someone's particular style so that you can use that to craft your own. Okay. Any other questions? Anybody think they're going to try it? Yeah. I'll try it. Yeah? Oh, yeah, I will. Okay, great. Add it to the toolbox. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. And I want to just give you a hint for anybody who likes digital creativity, which presumably you do since you joined me tonight. Um, I am making plans for a digital creativity challenge in June and July. I'm gonna come up with a handful of prompts like, um, like alter a photo of yourself or draw anything digitally, make a digital painting and you can do it in your own way. And then um, you can submit them to me if you're interested and I'll have a display in the library. It's my plan for this summer. So keep Fire Alpaca in mind if um, you decide to take part in that, or if you just want to do it on your own, also fantastic. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you very, very much. much. Yeah, Bye. thank you everybody Bye. for coming. <laughs> You'll get an email from me probably tomorrow with a survey, so you can let me know what you thought. And if you have any questions, if you try it and you need help on anything, just let me know. I'll be glad to help. Okay. And Thanks. if you draw something and you want to send me a picture that you drew or a gift that you made, definitely please send it to me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Bye. Thanks, everybody.